Hi everybody and welcome to another video of the channel. So as you can see in front of me I've got a playset of none other than the cult classic Horror by John Carpenter from 1982, The Thing. So first things first, let me start by saying that um, in terms of the Portuguese translation for the title of the film, our translators are somewhat inventive, so they never really uh, use, or at least sometimes, that they don't really follow the rules in terms of the name of the original movie. What I've got here is an example of the DVD release here in Portugal, and this movie here in Portugal got the name of Veio do Outro Mundo, which could roughly be translated as It Came From Another World. Okay, so that being said, let's go on to explore a little bit of this of this playset. So, first of all, um, what I find interesting about this movie is that it kind of it has an up-to-date uh, notion, an up-to-date um, issue, which we are experiencing right now. Actually, in the most recent times, in the past year, notions of confinement and social distancing have become part of our everyday vocabulary. Well, as far as this movie goes, I cannot think of any other landscape more inhospitable than Antarctica, the place in which this film is set. So there is confinement all the way. So an environment so hostile that someone would die within minutes because of the low freezing temperatures. You know, you know extremely difficult to live and that's confinement in its very barest form. Okay, so what we've got here is the main character of this movie, uh, played by Kurt Russell, R.J. McCready. When he enters the, can the kennel, and if you uh, remember the story of this film, you will remember that the particular aspect, the particularly terrifying aspect of this movie, is that the alien, uh, in this case the monster, can assume any form it touches. So it could be another person, it, uh, just as long as it is organic, okay? Um, it could be an animal, it could be a person. So when it first attacks, the, it's the dogs, it's the dogs that are first, that first fall victims to this, to this monster. And when R.J. McCready uh, gets uh, to the kennel, the monster is in the process of assimilating and then copying other dogs because it originally came from a previous encampment, a different set of scientists from another country, in this case Norwegians, and we will explore that story in a couple of minutes time, okay? But without anyone noticing, without anyone knowing, anyone except for the dogs of course, um, it uh, started to assimilate them in a most violent way and mimicking them and copying them. As you will notice, so these figures have no articulation, so this dog is in the process of being assimilated, and this one hasn't had the chance to happen it to him because McCready shoots it in the chest, okay, and thereby rendering the mimic impossible. Okay, so unfortunately I got this figure some years ago and uh, it's by a manufacturing company called Sota Toys and which has already become extinct. Okay, this is from 2006 by the way and I got it second hand so unfortunately some of the appendages on the original creature uh, are missing okay so there are a couple of holes so I'm assuming it would have at least three or four appendages on each side of this you know monster okay so as you can see the material is quite pliable so it would obviously invade its victims bodies by touching them okay and appropriating its shape. Okay. In terms of the articulation, there isn't much to say about this figure. It rotates 
in terms of the waist and it's sporting its you know signature rifle case shotgun with which it actually kills the dogs and the pen itself uh, is interesting because it's got some detail to the door okay you'll see here okay the door has this double colored so you can actually see the in carvings on the wood okay and the okay it opens and closes that's the only movement it's got and the different ground okay on the outside the snowy and on the inside this grassy ground in which the dogs lay and rested okay so one thing I truly enjoy about this film was that later on so the original from Carpenter master of the of horror okay as I've said before was uh, someone picked it up again on 2011 and I had to jot down the name of the director so as not to forget its name um, it's by a gentleman um, I'm trying to get to his name <laughs> he, he's Dutch I know that much uh, haven't written it down okay but doesn't really matter okay so it, there was this prequel in 2011 and so I also have it here. This time the Portuguese translators have given it the right name. They called it a coisa, which means the thing. And what is particularly interesting for me is that it's a prequel to the original Carpenter movie, uh, but the last post credit scene, the last film of the 2011, the last scene of the 2011 film is exact finishes exactly where the first scene in the original movie originated. So something that we have, and being a Star Wars fan myself, I've seen this sequence of events in Rogue One, okay? So the final scene where Vader destroys all the rebel troopers and tries to get the missing information, the stolen information, okay? so. It's exactly what happens here. The prequel goes directly into the original film. It's interesting because I've had the chance to watch this film with some uh, younger viewers and they said that the argument um, immediately transported them to a video game they used to play, which was Among Us. Uh, this is interesting because the story, um, you know, good storytelling is timeless. That is my thesis for all these videos and my love of movies. It's not about special effects. The special effects are dated on this one. You've got no CGI. These are shot in stop motion. So when you see the original film, you will immediately notice that the, the special effects aren't exactly up to date. But it's not about special effects, is it? It's about storytelling and it's about the way it's shot, the way the story is told and the notion that in this case you, the greatest fear is not knowing the shape that the enemy would take, the shape that the monster would assume. What is more, each individual cell on this alien um, invader, shall we call it like this, had the, the ability to try and survive by itself. So it's quite easy for this uh, alien to reproduce, okay? To start, you know, occupying the entire world, each world where it eventually reached. I remember, I immediately associate a song to this to this film and that is TV Wonders Superstition there is a scene when the cook Knowles is you know he's got some rollerblades and he's complaining about some disrespectful man in the encampment um, to who has uh, left his drawers his dirty underwear in the kitchen actually obviously wasn't it was the, the alien the monster 
who have copied one of the others and it cannot copy the clothes so it shredded all the, those clothes and as he uh, has the um, was complaining to them you can listen to the song by Stevie Wonder if you don't know it I absolutely recommend that you listen to it because it's got this great great vibe to it okay so I've got other figures from this film but I thought that this little set was enough for one single video and McFarlane also approached this this uh, classic in terms of horror uh, and I will probably have the chance to to show those other figures on a later video that's it. Thank you for spending the last minutes in my company. As you know, in this time of forced confinement, movies are a great way of spending time and escaping this somewhat bleak reality that we're experiencing right now. If you've enjoyed what you've watched, please say so. If you want to keep on watching videos of this content and similar ones, you know what you have to do. Until those videos come along, I will see you here.